Rude. Uh, oh, I can tell this story now. Y'all people have been liking the Rick Rude stories. Uh, I, y'all know I cuss a lot. I cuss a lot 24-7 and, and less kids are around and that's time when it's, uh, you put the filter on and you stop cussing. One time we were driving down the road and Rick, God dang, he liked to smoke some dope. I don't give a flying shit about dope. I was a, I was a drinker. And Rick was a man's man, and everybody liked and respected Rick Rude. I loved talking business with him. Some of the conversations we would have in those cars going to and from the town when Rick started breaking out, started breaking down psychology and uh, booking a territory and pitting this guy versus that and talking about getting the heat, getting over, all the stuff that used to come from his mouth. It reminded me of the conversation I had with Scott Hall the other day, man, just a depth of knowledge. But one time, to go back to the story, we was riding down the road, and I think I was driving, I think Paul Lee was riding shotgun, and I think Rick was in the back seat. He might have been smoking a joint. I cannot remember. Anyway, I was up there motherfucking this and that, goddamn fucks, fuck goddamn, saying all the damn uh, words that I say. I was on a tirade, and finally... Rick Rude, one of those macho guys in the history of the pro wrestling business. And Rick was kind of religious, you know. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I believe in something, but I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm particularly religious. I cuss a lot. My, my, my deal is, I, I guess, uh, I believe in a golden rule. I believe treat people like you want to be treated is the bottom line of my beliefs and, uh, try to do more good than bad. Now, that, that's a bullshit thing to say. But my, my biggest thing is, is, Treat people like you want to be treated, that golden rule type thing. But anyway, I guess Rick had obviously had a gut full of me saying, God damn, and taking the Lord's name in vain. And every time I cuss, I don't mean to offend anybody that's a Christian. It's just something I say. And anyway, so I'm cussing along. Me and Paulie are talking, and finally, out of the backseat bellows, Rick Rude. For fuck's sake, Steve, must you use the Lord's name in vain? <laughs> Me and Paul Lee just looked at each other, and we started laughing our ass off. Goddamn Rick Rude back there smoking a fucking joint and yelling at me for saying goddamn. So anyway, I toned down the GDs a little bit to appease Rick Rude. He was the senior veteran in the car. I showed him the due respect and stopped taking the Lord's name in vain so many times, but... He just would just come up with some classics out of the blue uh, at any time, anywhere. And it was always a Rick Rude original. You know, here's the ultimate one. I've told this story before, but I'll tell you, uh, since, since you're a country boy now, uh, you know, Rick being from Minnesota, the land of 11,000 lakes, you know, they got ponds and everybody fishes over there. And Rick Rude was a very good fisherman. So he decided... One day we decided, hey, let's go fishing. There was a fishing hole not too far away. We got our fishing poles. Rick Root caught probably 20, 25 fish. I might have caught three. He was in the sweet spot. He just kept pulling them out of water. And I'm over looking like, God dang, this guy's killing me. <laughs> He's crushing me. So we get, we get back to the lodge. And it's, it's a very basic structure. There's a screen door. And when we come this trip, someone had put a big lazy boy chair there made out of vinyl. And there was a table with an old school VHS deck on it and a, a old little color TV, and it was Cape Fear, the movie. And so Rick put in Cape Fear, and he was watching the movie, and I'm out in the backyard. We're on 2,000 acres in the middle of nowhere in Swap Country in Ryan, Georgia, and I'm out there, a pair of pliers and a knife, cleaning a catfish over a trash can. And I don't think it's any, you know, I'm not breaking any news that Rick liked to smoke his marijuana. And he was just always in these. It wasn't just a little bitty joint. It was a joint about as big as my little finger. <laughs> I look in there. He's watching Cape Fear. You know, Robert De Niro's in there laughing on the screen. And they see this big cloud of smoke coming up. And then finally the screen door opens and it shuts. And Rick comes over to the trash can. He goes, what are you doing? And I said, well, hell, Rick, I'm cleaning all these catfish. I said, you want to clean a few? <laughs> Nope. 
<laughs> he turns around, the screen door slams, he sits back in his chair, and I'm thinking, God dang it, you know, but what I'm going to say, Rick Rude, you know. Yeah, of course, you I'm, sure I'm as hell could argue with him. I'm the low guy on the totem pole, but it, it was just those memories of, of traveling uh, with Paul. Hey, Steve, longtime fan, coming to you from South Jersey. I was just curious to know if you had any good Rick Rude stories. You talked about him a bit a few weeks ago with your fishing trip story, and seeing as he was one of my all-time favorites, I'd love to hear more. Hey, man, here's another Rick Rude story. And I think, no, it was a different uh, occasion. And maybe I told you this one before. If I did, stop me. All right, when I first started hunting in South Georgia, I'd been uh, I'd stopped hunting for a couple of years because I was in the wrestling business. Then I hooked up with Mr. Wonderful, Paul Orndorff, who was a, just a deer hunting fanatic. And uh, so he goes, hey, man, I'm hunting down in South Georgia. Join my lease. So I did. And my gun was in Texas, so I had to buy me a new gun. So I said, well, hell, Paul, I don't know what caliber to get anymore. I was shooting a twenty two two fifty. He goes, no, man. He goes, 7 mag. He goes, you got to build a 7 mag. And so, sure enough, I'm a Remington guy, so I built a Remington 7 mag, put a Leopold scope on it, and that was my deer gun. So, a couple uh, years, uh, one year goes by, and uh, Rick Rude hears all the hunting stories me and Paul are, are talking about and decides he wants to join the hunting lease. Well, Rick doesn't have a gun. He's more of a fisherman. So Paul tells him to build a gun, build a 7 mag. All three of us down there in South Georgia, Ryan, Georgia, to be specific, are shooting 7 mag. Well, Rick didn't know a damn thing about hunting. And any, I'm saying this, I, I love Rick Rude to death. Uh, rest in peace. But anyway, uh, one time... Paul wasn't there, and we were riding around on my four-wheeler because Rick Rude didn't have his yet. He would go on later to trade one of his Sea-Doo Wave Runners to one of the Steiner brothers for his four-wheeler. That's how he got his a little bit later. But anyway, so riding down the road, there's another guy on another four-wheeler, and he's showing us the different parts of the property. This is 2,000 acres, and a lot of it is swampland, and showing us some areas that I did not know about. And so we're riding down the road. I mean, it's a little dirt road in the middle of nowhere. And here comes a damn sow, a female pig, just trotting right down the road towards us. And the guy says, I didn't bring my gun because I didn't think he was going to see anything. We're just riding around on four wheelers. But Rick had brought his gun. So the guy says, damn, Rick, he goes, shoot that pig, shoot that pig. So Rick, Rick gets down. I'm sitting right beside him. He's using my four wheelers as a rest. I got my hands over my ears. All of a sudden, Rick, he fires. Click. Nothing happened. He ejects the shell, takes aim, pulls the trigger, click. Nothing happens. Reloads, takes aim, fires, click. The bullets aren't firing. Okay, he's shot three times. He's got one more bullet. He puts the final bullet in the barrel, pulls the trigger, click. About that time, the, the pig was so close that she heard the click of the firing pin and ran off into the brush. And we all stood up. I'm like, dude, what the F? And the guy, Rick's gun was so dirty from a mud hole we'd gotten in a couple of months earlier that the guy said, man, your firing pin is so dirty, it's not hitting the uh, primer. And uh, man, that didn't sound right to me. And I looked down to the ground, and the bullets looked real small. And a 7-millimeter bullet is pretty big. I looked down to the ground. I, I picked up three of the shells, and I held them and looked at them. And I said, dude, I said, these are seven millimeter odd eight bullets. These aren't seven mag bullets. There's a smaller cartridge, uh, which is a seven millimeter odd eight, uh, which is basically what, what, a neck down 308? But it's a whole different cartridge than the seven mag. It's a little bitty bastard. But because he saw the 7mm, he didn't pay attention to the 08. So I said, dude, I said, here's your problem. I said, you're shooting seven out eight bullets in a seven mag. Those things are rattling around in there. He's lucky one of them didn't just fluke and go off It would have, if it would have struck the primer. But, you know, that was hunting with Rick Rude. Uh, but, man, I tell you what, he wasn't the greatest hunter in the world. But you talk about a fun guy to hang out with, especially a guy uh, to talk about the wrestling business with. I was talking to uh, Scott Hall the other night on the phone i gave him a call out of the blue just to see what he was doing i talked to him about 30 minutes check in see how his uh, boy cody's doing man you know him 
Scott Hall and Rick Rude have a whole lot of the same common ground as far as the business or maybe some of their backgrounds, but uh, Scott Hall, a very, very savvy guy. He was breaking out some stuff that I had never heard about. And it's funny because everybody that goes down the road, kind of you learn the same things, but you go about learning it a different way or it goes in and sinks to a different level of 101, 201, 301. And uh, Scott Hall has been around a long time, so he had some real interesting stories. Uh, i got to have him back on the show because I had a good time talking to him. We were just shooting a breeze. But anyway, so anyway, that's a Rick Root story for you real quick.